Well, hi there, Internet. My name's Court, and you've got courtside seats for my review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. They just seem a little weird. Surrender, surrender. Guardians Volume 2 is director James Gunn's follow-up to the original flick which came out back in 2014. The movie was based on a fairly little-known property and it really took the world by storm being an incredibly funny and fun ride. It also made a superstar out of Chris Pratt. Now, I, I want to go on a record before we get any further to say that I don't remember the first one very well at all. I saw it when it came out and I haven't seen it since. I've been meaning to, I just kind of haven't. For instance, I didn't remember the character of Nebula at all. In this flick, through context in this movie, I realized that I guess she was a pretty major villain in the first movie, but I don't remember. So volume two offers a lot of what, the, what made the first movie great. Like I said, it's really funny, it's a lot of fun, it's an absolute thrill ride, and it does have some dramatic beats as well. It's not all goofy, goofy jokes. As you may have uh, figured out from when I serenaded you earlier, the movie's got a great soundtrack, and Cheap Trick Surrender is on it. I, you can have that as the only song in the soundtrack, and it would still be, like, the best soundtrack ever. So the basic plot of this movie, or at least where it kicks off, you know, I'm going fairly non-spoilery here, but where it kicks off is the Guardians have been hired by this planet called the Sovereign, and they have these, like, really elaborate, powerful batteries that are worth millions of, I don't know, credits, and the Guardians have to protect it from some kind of super alien monster thing. It's a great opening sequence. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to be saying it's a lot of fun a lot throughout this video because it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Also, fairly early, I guess it's maybe in the beginning of the second act, Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, meets his father, Ego, who is played by Kurt Russell. I'll talk about acting in a little bit. So first off, let's talk about the good. Because there, there are some, I do have some negatives with this movie, but let's talk about the good first, shall we? So like I said, it is a really, really funny flick. Maybe not as funny as the first. Again, I can't remember, but I know I was having a great time. I was chuckling and giggling. At one point, I believe I guffawed. The movie looks absolutely beautiful. The CG is great. Rocket Raccoon looks fantastic. As good or better than he did in the first one. Drax continues to be my favorite character. He was making me laugh, and he actually had a couple of dramatic moments, a couple of dramatic beats, and Dave Bautista like handled them really quite well. I was I was really impressed with what he could do. Peter Quill also has some dramatic moments. Most of them have to do with the death of his mother that we saw in the very beginning of the first flick. And of course, Chris Pratt's comic timing is as impeccable as always. Zoe Saldana's Gomorrah is sort of the stoic heroine that we remember from the first one, and she does just as good, if not better, of a job. I, I'm a really big fan of Zoe Saldana. I recently saw her in, um, what was it called? The latest Ben Affleck movie. Uh, Live by Night, the sort of Prohibition era gangster flick, which a lot of people didn't like. I thought it was really good, and she was fantastic in it. I, I really like Zoe Saldana. Rocket Raccoon is Rocket Raccoon. Who, who, who doesn't love that furry little scamp? Right? And Baby Groot? Come on now. He's cute as a button. A phrase I don't really understand. This is a button. Do you find it cute? No, you don't. It's a f button. I'm sorry for yelling. I'm a passionate guy, what can I say? Like I said, I, I didn't remember Nebula from the first flick. And, and maybe part of that is because the actress who plays Nebula, Karen Gillan, I didn't know who that was when I saw the first movie. Now I'm familiar, because I saw her last week in that movie, The Circle, and I'll leave a link in the description to the review I did of that movie. Uh, spoiler alert, don't see it. But she was, she was absolutely one of the standouts in The Circle, and somehow I completely neglected to mention her in my review. Um, and it's, I feel bad about it, it's a, it's really the fact that um, I suck and I never claim to be a good person. But she's great in this movie. She was actually my favorite performance in, in Guardians 2. Even under all of that makeup, like you can barely see any of her face and she emotes through all of it and she was an absolute joy to watch. I absolutely loved her in this flick. Now, Kurt Russell uh, as Ego, uh, he kicks ass because he's Kurt Russell and Kurt Russell kicks ass. Michael Rooker. Michael Rooker kicks ass, because he's Michael Rooker and my... You get the point. 
Okay, let's talk about the bad, because there is some bad. I, I did have some problems with this movie. At two hours and 16 minutes, it's a little long. Now, it, not that it drags, the pacing is solid, but it, I don't think it needed to be that long. The story felt a little bit bloated, be a few too many characters and too many plot lines jumping around, and I, I think the movie would have been a little bit better had you shaved maybe 15 minutes off of it. The 3D in this movie is not particularly impressive. Now, I don't like 3D. I think it's a gimmick. It doesn't immerse me any further into the movie. In fact, I find it generally takes me out. Some movies, however, are really inventive with the way they use their 3D. Even, even the Ghostbusters remake, which was not very good, they did a cool thing where the beams from the proton packs actually, you know, the, the movie's like this, and then there's the black bars at the top and the bottom, right? The beams actually went into that negative space, which I thought was really cool. That was doing something different. This movie doesn't do anything different. The 3D doesn't really add to it, and I would say, unless you're a massive fan of 3D, it's not really worth paying the extra money. So yeah, the movie's a bit busy, it's a bit long, but it's a lot of... See? I told you. It's a lot of fun. It's a really good time. It's it's thrilling. And yeah, I'm looking forward to part three. James Gunn has said he's going to make a trilogy. I will say, given the final act of this movie, I don't know how you would up the stakes, but you know, I'll leave it up to James Gunn. It's why I don't get paid the big bucks. Go forth and crush, Jamie. Why am I condescending to James Gunn? He's better than I am. Now, I don't have a proprietary rating system as of yet, so, uh... What am I going to give Guardians Volume 2? Um, I'm not really into sodomy, but I love Gamora. So I'm going to give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Gamora with a smidgen of Sodom out of 10. So what did you think of Guardians Volume 2? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you offended by my rating? Whatever your thoughts, hit the comments below and let's discuss. If you enjoyed this review, please like it and share it. Really, totally helps me build this channel. And if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking the Court Shake logo that'll be popping up at the bottom right of your screen anytime now. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.